So, folks, something extremely concerning is happening tonight as Donald Trump rallies his supporters to try and save him, to try and stop the indictment and arrest from happening on Tuesday. Hit the like and subscribe button so we can track the daily dangers of Donald Trump. Remember what I've been saying, and frankly, what a lot of you have been saying. I don't want to pretend like I'm some sort of, you know, crystal ball haver with, you know, being able to figure this out. But we knew that Donald Trump was going to be extremely dangerous with his back up against the wall. Paradoxically with Trump, he's dangerous all the time. But when he feels confident, when he feels actually like he's winning, he's not nearly as dangerous. He's still a maniac. He's still a monster. But he doesn't snarl like a junkyard dog unless his back is against the wall. And right now, the feds have been called in. The FBI and other federal police have been called in on an emergency basis to examine Donald Trump and his rally because it is going on in bloody violence as we speak. What's happening right now is the percolation. We've already seen some outbursts of violence in places, but specifically there's a worry that as this starts, as Trump has his first rally, his first post-indictment rallies and all of that, that it's going to get very, very bad. And again, this isn't just hypothetical, because if it was just philosophical, it would be, frankly, you know, uh, random guys like me talking about it on YouTube. And that would be it. We'd be talking about the philosophical dangers, hypothetical dangers of Trump. But if you listen to these two clips, it notes that the police are already on the scene of Trump's rally to his supporters. CNN is now learning FBI special agents across the country are actively looking for possible domestic terror threats related to Trump's upcoming court appearance in Florida. Sources say some pro-Trump groups are already making plans to travel to Miami and support the former president as he faces these federal charges in the classified documents case. CNN's Josh Campbell is joining us right now. Josh, I know you've been talking to your sources in the FBI and elsewhere. What more are you hearing? Well, Wolf, this is so important because we know that Donald Trump's election lies inspired that deadly January 6th insurrection at the Capitol, and U.S. federal law enforcement is working to make sure that that doesn't happen again. I spoke to five law enforcement sources across the country today who said that FBI domestic terrorism agents and analysts are actively working to identify any potential threats surrounding that upcoming court appearance. They are looking at online uh, platforms that are popular with extremist groups. This is important. They are also querying and tasking confidential human informants who report on these domestic terrorism groups. Now, as secretive and you know closed off as these groups think they are, they are infiltrated by uh, informants of the FBI. That has often led to consternation among these extremist groups, as well as infighting and paranoia. By the way, I'm told the FBI doesn't mind that one bit. Uh, at this point, there's no indication of any credible and specific threat, but FBI agents and intelligence analysts are certainly uh, looking for those potential threats. One uh, source told me that they don't want to see the same violence on January 6th happen uh, this coming Tuesday, Wolf. Yeah, no one does. Uh, and Josh, I understand we are learning new details about the U.S. Secret Service and their planned posture next week. That's right, Wolf. The U.S. Secret Service issued a statement a short time ago saying that they won't be asking for any special uh, precautions to be taken surrounded by uh, Trump's visit to that courthouse on Tuesday. But, you know, this is so important. Their mission is to protect Donald Trump. And we know that these extremist groups, they're not going to target the former president. They're adherents uh, of his message. But the question comes down to what about everyone else? What about the people who work in that courthouse? What about members of the prosecutorial team who we know have, you know, faced threats? And so that's why the this work by federal law enforcement is so important across the country trying to determine are there potential threats looking online looking you know talking to sources anyone who might have information federal law enforcement will certainly respect first amendment protected activity at the courthouse if people want to come and protest and support donald trump but something they certainly won't abide is any violence so we're told they're working uh, to try to disrupt dismantle any types of groups who might be planning that wolf yeah the last thing we need right now is another january 6th type insurrection yeah. over in miami all right uh, aaron over to you mm. Absolutely. All right. Well, the federal indictment of Donald Trump quotes several instances where he spoke in the past about severe punishments for anyone who mishandled classified documents. They literally go through and, and they show them. Here are some. One of the first things we must do is to enforce all classified...
back on this historic day of news. My colleague Rachel Maddow has been monitoring some of the, um, for lack of a better word, vitriol coming out uh, from the right. What are you seeing? Well, Nicole, one of the things that we're watching today is not only what this means personally for Donald Trump and for his political future and all the rest of it. What we're watching is to see what this means for the country. Um, and Donald Trump has been pretty explicit in warning um, that if the legal system is used to hold him to account, that he will call on his supporters um, to respond um, through means of protest or through means of fighting or other terms like that. Well, we've certainly seen already in pro-Trump um, message boards and things online, we've seen people definitely calling for violence. We saw some of that after his first indictment as well. But we've also seen a couple of things from Republican members of Congress. What's on the screen right here is from Congressman, Republican Congressman Clay Higgins of Louisiana. President Trump said, this is from last night, President Trump said he has been summoned to appear at the federal courthouse in Miami on Tuesday. This is a perimeter probe from the oppressors. Hold. Our POTUS has this. Our POTUS is a thing that Trump people use, which means real president of the United States, implying that he actually was reelected, even though he was not. This is a perimeter probe from the oppressors. Hold. Our POTUS has this. Buckle up. One over 50K, which I think is a reference to the, 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 the scale on military maps. Know your bridges which presumably means, like, be ready when it comes to, you know, knowing about critical infrastructure. Um, rock steady calm, that is all. So this is a perimeter probe from the oppressors and then this reference in military jargon uh, to what people should be doing in response to it with the specific, specific reference to which courthouse Trump is going to be in on Tuesday and at what time. That was from Clay Higgins last night. I think you saw uh, some sort of alarmed response to that. What exactly is Congressman Higgins doing here? But then uh, this afternoon, it got a little bit worse. Um, Republican Congressman Andy Biggs of Arizona posting this this afternoon, uh, quote, we have now reached a war phase, eye for an eye. So again, we are seeing Trump supporters and Trump, you know, media, pro-Trump media personalities on the right um, effectively calling for violence, at least calls it calling for some sort of physical resistance to this act by the Justice Department. But to have members of Congress um, using language like this, um, I'm glad it is not more than two of them thus far, but we are seeing mm -hmm. at least a couple of them get pretty far out on a limb to the point where that limb starts breaking in terms of whether or not we are a country that's going to accept that everybody's bound by the rule of law and we have to let the process play out. I mean, Rachel, we have one investigation, the, the January 6th Select Committee probe, that was able to track the impact of the December 19th tweet, come, you know, quote, will be wild, to be wild. the acts for which two groups, militia members, were found guilty of seditious conspiracy. Um, we have a current warning by DHS and the FBI governing our whole country right now, saying that around political events and political actors, Basically, every group except Republican men are a potential target for violence. And we have, in the era of Trump, acts of political violence that have been carried out against the Speaker's husband, against election workers in New Mexico. I mean, it, it's not a will it happen, it's a has it happened and will it happen again. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, and it's interesting to see. <laughs> We also have Florida, well, yes. Rachel. Yes. We have Florida. We have the, the, the fact that, you know, that is Enrique Tarrio's base. It has become a Proud Boys hotbed, and it has become um, those who watch national security are concerned about Florida becoming a magnet for extremists and extremism. Um, it is the planning base of, you know, MAGA right now. It is the headquarters. And, I, I you know, it's concerning that a member of Congress, a member of the body that was attacked on January January 6th um, would actually do a stand back and stand by type tweet. Day of his indictment in New or his arraignment in New York, yeah, there was like a busload of people in New York, but he really wanted the yep. whole country shut down by mass pro Trump civil disobedience, yep. and he didn't get it, and it was a humiliation. And he's very, you know, he's very attuned to his crowd sizes. <laughs> and so it may be that he approaches this differently in terms of asking for something that he might not get. But you're absolutely right, Joy, the geography here matters, and asking for it in Manhattan might be a totally different kettle of fish than asking for it in Florida. Alex. I was going to say, um, you know, I think it's really meaningful that it's members of Congress 
that are saying this, that are using this military lingo. A, as someone who's spoken to former militia members in advance of January 6, a lot of these guys that were responsible for January 6 are ex-military, current military. They're in law enforcement. They understand what that means. And we're not talking about an ousted former president calling for this. We're talking about people who are currently in Congress, mm -hmm. who, by the way, the president has tasked with getting him off the hook and who have so far been falling in line. I mean, if you see what the Oversight Committee has been doing in recent weeks, if you look at what the Judiciary Committee has been doing in recent weeks, they're listening to Trump and they have power. And, and that is a, a, a real distinction, right? I mean, we know all, all he, the Congress has tried to mess around with Alvin Bragg, but we know Jim Jordan, yep. um, Comer, the rest of them, they are very fired up about this. And now you have these tweets that are really in no uncertain terms calling for military Correct. footing. Correct. It's very scary stuff, guys. Very scary. Again, I've said this before. Fonnie Willis is down in Georgia, who has she hasn't even indicted yet, right? She's she she you're not even the sec, first or second to indict. But since 2021, she's been wearing, or at least her, she's had her staff wear bulletproof vests. Because at a rally in 2021, Donald Trump basically put her picture up on the screen and called her out, and not not just on social media, but at a rally, at, at, and and said like this woman is targeting me. This this the and, and and if I ever get indicted, it's gonna be wild. We're gonna have wild protests. And since that moment, she's called in the FBI, like the FBI are being called in tonight because of these rallies and also because of the threats. And so this is a very, very critical moment. On the one hand, you cannot ignore the physical threat of violence from Donald Trump, but neither can you let it intimidate you because justice requires that this SOB go to prison, even if his supporters get violent. And let's be clear, especially if his supporters get violent, then you have to lock him up even harder, both as a deterrent to the next future fascist thug want to be president and also because Donald Trump at least indirectly would be inciting that violence so guys we are just kicking off the next few days are going to be very very important stay safe